Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a beauty, what a joy to be joining you again this morning. Welcome to this time of morning devotion uh, with me. I'm Pastor Joseph Akinyele, and uh, this has been an amazing ride so far. Um, we, we, we will continue to honor the Lord with our time. And I want to thank you, every single one of you that is finding time uh, to do this. Uh, God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Um, this morning we will be looking at a very interesting topic. Uh, uh, it, it's, I call it the I am ingredient. The I am ingredient. We all know what ingredient is. Ingredient is part of the things you use to, it's part of what makes your meal or food or whatever it is you're putting together. Ingredient. I am ingredient. Uh, but because of the situation in our world, there's a lot of unrest. There's things, you know, fear here and there. But God's word is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Hallelujah. So I, I just want to say good morning to every single one of you who is joining right now. The Lord bless you and honor you. Uh, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, think, or imagine. And this is according to the power that works within us. So this is a beautiful day. The sun is shining. Birds are, are singing the glory and praises of God all around. So in spite of the challenges around us, the word of God remains true. The peace of God remains true in your heart and in my heart. And so as we continue this morning, I, I want to play you this song uh, that, that, that I made. You've listened, some of you have listened to it before. It says, peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. It's both a prophetic word and a confirmative word, a declarative word. You are declaring that there is peace in my home. There is peace in my heart. There is peace in my life. There is peace in all I do. I have the mind of Christ. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. So let's listen to this worship song together. And then we'll get right in, into this message this morning. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. See you after this worship time. Amen. It's just amazing to see how God wants to speak peace over his people living this season. He says peace over every heart. Peace over every home. Shalom. Alright? Shalom to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Peace over every heart. Peace over every home. Shalom, shalom. Peace over every heart, peace over every home. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Sing with me. Peace over every heart, peace over every home. Shalom. over every heart peace over every home nothing nothing missing nothing broken we decree peace over every heart peace over every home shalom shalom peace peace over every heart over every home, nothing missing, nothing broken. Yes, we decree peace over every heart, peace over every home. Shalom, yeah. shalom, yeah. peace over every heart, peace over every home. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Oh, yes. Ah, shit. Ah, rebo, shit. Ah, 
Andele Rossi over every heart, peace over every home, shalom, shalom, peace over every heart, peace over every home, nothing missing, nothing broken, oh God, we decree peace over every heart. Over every home, shalom, shalom. Peace over every heart, peace over every home. Nothing, nothing missing, nothing broken. Peace over every heart, peace over every heart, peace over every home. nothing broken this is the promise of the father nothing missing nothing broken peace over my heart can we just quickly pray that prayer together right now say god peace over my heart i don't know what it might be that is a challenge or something that is not working something that is is not in place uh, something you want to speak the peace of god on i don't know what storm might be raging around you i i I don't know what you do, uh, singles and at the place of your work or married couples or, or in your mind or, or your business or, or friends or children or grandchildren or, or parents. I don't know what it is that you want to speak peace to just like Jesus did to the storm while they were on the sea with the disciples. And so uh, can we take just a couple of moments and just pray peace right now? And maybe someone else that you know that may be going through a tough time in their lives. And you want to say peace over this storm in this person's life in the name of Jesus. Can we just go ahead and pray right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release your peace in all situations that your, your children might be going through. God, even those that are not saved around us, because we are around them, God, we speak peace over them right now in the name of Jesus. Peace over their hearts. Peace over their homes. Peace over my heart. Peace over my home peace over my life peace over my mind peace in my home peace in my environment i say every storm every every disturbances every 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 uh, chaos every distraction we speak peace to you right now in the mighty name of jesus the peace of god that passes all understanding will release it right now go ahead and pray just just open your mouth and just pray take this moment and just pray in the name of jesus 
peace, 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 peace all around me, peace, peace, peace in Jesus' name, peace is mine, peace is yours, in the mighty name of Jesus, peace that passes all understanding, guard my heart and mind through Christ Jesus, and that's what the Bible says in Philippians, it says let the peace that passes all understanding guards your mind and Christ through Christ Jesus and it tells us what we should think on to stop thinking on the things that are not working but to think on the things that are working think on the truth and the truth is nothing but the word of God so to, to think on, on noble things think, things that are, are, are of good report to think on such things and, and not think so much on the negative and what is happening and yes you can read the news but you shouldn't ponder thinking meditating on the bad news meditate on the word of god instead and then you will be able to maintain and retain your peace your heart can easily drift and draft away from the peace of god and so that's why we you and i need to learn to take hold of this peace and say hey peace be still in my mind peace be still in my heart peace be still in my home the enemy is he is a king of chaos but we have a prince and his name is jesus and he is the prince of peace and he's the one we are calling on to this morning the one you are calling on to this morning say come lord come lord maranatha come with your peace come with your holy spirit and do what only you can do in our lives in our homes in the mighty name of jesus in jesus mighty name we love you, Baba. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for life. Thank you for grace. Thank you for strength. Thank you for a fresh word every day. Every day. We are so grateful, God. Be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. You know, that word just struck me right now. A fresh word every day with grace. It is possible, my friend. It is possible to live in God's presence and be fresh every day. I don't know how he does it, but I get fresh word from him every day. I don't know how. I mean, once you're in God's presence, God does not lack what to say. We are the one that lack what to say, but not God's presence, not his word. His word is ever fresh. His word is ever available. If we just let him on a daily basis... Maybe it's too much for someone. Someone will say, maybe it's too much for me. I can't do this every day. It's too much. Well, it depends on your commitment. It depends on what you're called to do. It depends on, on the assignment given to you. It depends on your love for him. Will it be too much to tell your wife, I love you every day? No, because you do care. And so, in a sense, for me, this is something that the Lord has put on my heart. If God has not put it on your heart, it may be difficult. It may be a challenging, but... But there is something else perhaps perhaps God has put in your heart. Maybe for you it's giving to people. You see what I'm saying? You can't but you are thinking every day, who can I be a blessing to? Who can I give? Who can I give to? Maybe for you it's encouraging someone every day. Maybe that's the passion that you have. You need to find your passion and do it daily. Do it regularly. Be faithful. You know, doing it daily means being faithful to it. Be faithful to the, to the call. Be faithful to your passion. Be, faith, be faithful to the assignment God has given you. And you will undoubtedly see the result. Amazing result will follow. Because every time you are faithful to the call, God increases it. God blesses it. God expands it. And that's what I'm seeing with this daily broadcast that we're, we're doing. I mean, every day, by His mercy and grace... I can see how many people that are watching this, that are viewing it. It's, it's not possible to have been doing in the church alone. And something, something has begun that we can't stop anymore. I mean, this, like this, maybe will change the format. It might not be like this every, every day. Uh, after the lockdown, there will be some changes. But we cannot stop to minister to the world anymore. God has brought us to a point where every one of you now, you, you, you are... Your mind, our mind has broken off the shell of just our local or our locality. I'm just in Tonsberg or I'm just in Bargain or I'm just in Oslo or I'm just in Lagos or I'm, I'm just in Kakinada or I'm just in Manila, Philippines. 
or I'm just in California. No, God is bigger than California. God is bigger than the Philippines or the Manilas or Manila. God is bigger than Kenya. God is bigger than Nairobi. God is bigger than Lagos. He is. He owns the whole world. And so God wants us to think that way in regard to his kingdom. The kingdom of God should not be limited to our locality. Yes, there are those who are called to a local, to, um, when we say local, it doesn't mean like cheap. No, it means the area, your immediate area. There are those that are called to your immediate area. There are those that are called to your city. There are those that are called to your nation. There are those that has a call to uh, uh, a region. And there are those that have a call uh, internationally, globally. Find what call, what area it is that God has called you. And by the grace of God, well, I'm going to take that topic. I'm going to really take it and to help. Because I, I know several of you have asked this question. How do I know my purpose? How do I know my calling? But your calling is not far away. Your calling is not missing. It's right in you. All I'm going to help you do is help you dig it. Help you find it in you. I'm not going to give you a call. I'm going to help you discover your call because it's right in you right in you that's how god does it and so let us do all that we can do what we can and let god anoint it with his holy spirit come holy spirit this morning come holy spirit this morning and do what only you can do talk to someone god open someone's heart open someone's mind i speak strength right now in the name of jesus to every every feeble knee. I speak the peace of God, the grace of God, the ability of God to be released within you. Come Holy Spirit. Right now. Oh, there he is. I really sense him right now. I don't know if you do in your place, but I sense God's presence right now. He only comes to where he is invited. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We honor you. Thank you, God. Thank you for the lives you're torching. Thank you for the homes you're changing. Thank you for the hearts you're mending. We honor you this day. Thank you for giving us the privilege, the opportunity to learn at your feet every day. We are honored, Baba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is all our hearts longs for. To be overcome by your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is all my heart longs for to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, ah, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill this atmosphere. Your glory, God, is all my heart longs for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, yeah. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. 
thank you, Father Lord, for your spirit. God, we thank you for your presence right now in our heart, in our midst. Thank you for moving in a fresh way. Thank you, God, for doing what only you can do. We are just grateful, God. We open our hearts to you. We open our minds to you. Fill me afresh, God. Fill your sons and daughters afresh all over the world, God. Fill us afresh with your presence. Fill us afresh with your spirit. Let us experience the new with you, God. Help us to walk above the storms of life. Help us to walk above the waters of life. And help us to be pleasing to you. Help us to bring joy to your heart. On a daily basis, we come as we are. We present before you. We cast our crowns before you, Father. We say, take all you will, God. We humble ourselves. Purify us on a daily basis. If there is any sin in any of our hearts, in any of our lives, God, we lay it at your feet right now. And we receive grace and mercy. Thank you, Father, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Father, we are grateful. Brothers and sisters, this morning I have a word for you. Um, as I said earlier on, it's the I am ingredient. If you're cooking food, you say you're cooking potatoes and uh, or you're cooking rice or you're cooking stew or soup. Uh, the things you put in to make it become the full meal, those things are called ingredients. Uh, I know you know, <laughs> uh, if salt is missing from your ingredient, uh, from your cooking, or it's not enough, you can tell that mm, something is missing. And if you want it to be delicious, you add some salt, or you add some maggi, or you add some, some uh, spice. All those things are called ingredients. Uh, the, the more of those you have, the richer your food or your meal is. I'm sure you know what I'm saying. Uh, you, the, the difference between a meal you just prepared anyhow and a meal that uh, maybe a, a chef, a professional chef prepares, is the attention and the ingredients put in them. There's this saying that good food, uh, it's, it's money that produces good food. When you see good food, you know, like, Wow. And that's why you pay a lot for it. Uh, the ambience, the presentation, the ingredients, top-notch, good, like good fish. They used to prepare it and all that. So in our, in our Christian walk, there are ingredients. There are things that as you add it to your life, your life becomes richer in God. And it's one of those I want to talk about this morning. And that that I want to talk about is the I am ingredient. I am, I am, I am ingredient. And I'll explain what I mean. It's not just God. It's not, yes, God is I am, but that's not what I'm talking about. But we're going to look at it uh, as I go through it right now in Jesus' name. And I'll start with Exodus 3, chapter, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Exodus 3, 13 to 15. I'm just going to read. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I am come to the children of Israel, and they say to, and I say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, This shall you say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you. Moreover, God said to Moses, This you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. Now, Exodus 27, 27. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Exodus uh, in Norwegian, that's the Andra, Andra Mose book. Andra Mose book. Exodus 27. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now let's look at Matthew. Matthew 6.13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, 
who do men say that I, the son of the son of God, am? Matthew sixteen thirteen. Who do do men say that I, the son of God, am? Just have that in your mind. I'm, we're going to look at it. And then John six thirty five. John six thirty five. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. One cannot but think about Jesus and the breaking of the five loaves and two fishes. I am the bread of life. So if you have the bread of life in you, friends, you will not be hungry or thirsty anymore. John 8, John 8, 12, John 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. John 9, 5. Yes, I know, a lot of scriptures this morning. You can go back, rewind it and go back over it later. John 5, 9. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. Then John 10 verse 9. John 10 verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. I am the door. It's unfortunate today when when we ask or people ask, you mean Jesus is the only way? And some people cannot find a good answer and they are saying, yeah, you know, you know. No, 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 no. There's no you know. There's no you know. <laughs> it's like asking. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I can't. Anyway, let's, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Will, he will find provision. He will find provision. John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. He gives his life for the sheep. John eleven twenty five. Don't worry, we're going to talk. John eleven twenty five, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live again. Let me read that again. John eleven twenty five, Jesus said to her, I am. This was a story about Lazarus, Mary and Martha. After Lazarus died and they came to Jesus and was telling him and Jesus said, hey, don't worry. Lazarus will rise again. And, and Martha, was it Mary, that said, Yes, I know on the day of resurrection he shall rise again. And Jesus said, Hey, I am, I that I'm standing before you right now. I am the resurrection and I am life. And if you believe in me, though you die, you will live. Woo, Shara Kasanta. And this is the hope for Christians, brothers and sisters. When people are worried that, oh, when, why are Christians dying? Why, why is this happening? Like, Don't worry about all those. Death is not final. Death is not the end for a Christian. There is life, and actually for everybody, really. Either you, either you believe in God or you, you don't believe in God. Death is not the final. After you die, reality will sudden, suddenly dawn on you. It's either you're making heaven or you did not make heaven. Unfortunately, there is no middle ground. There is no, listen to me, you can't buy your way around. I don't care how rich you are. You can't move yourself from one place in heaven or in hell or whatever it is called to another place. It doesn't exist. So, but Jesus says, I am resurrection and I am life. So anyone who dies in Christ, oof, krasuta, did not really die. You just changed address. And even if you did not die, if you died and you're not in Christ, you also changed address. Except the address that you're going to is, is not a good address. 
I really want to give you the opportunity today, if, if possible. If you know you really have never accepted Jesus, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's too risky. The world is so fragile. Things are happening anyhow now. You never know what will go, what's going to happen next. We are in the end of days. Anything can happen. Anybody can fall dead. Any disease can come up suddenly. Somebody, imagine how many people are dying today or have died. One month ago, two months ago, they probably did not plan. They were, they, nobody planned they were going to die this year. Nobody plans to die. But it just happens. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Even you as a Christian, you need to live prepared every day. Live prepared as if Christ is coming for you in the next minute, the next hour. Keep your heart ready, everything. Don't, don't, don't let anything in your heart that is not clean. I was, saying to, I was saying to one of my sons, please don't do anything you don't want me to know. If you want to do something and you're thinking in your head, oh, I don't want dad to see this, then run away from me, don't do it. And that's just humans. How about God? Who can see all things? So, if there is anything we're doing, you're doing that you know is not pleasing. Anything you do, you don't want somebody else to see. Don't do it. Anything you're doing, you don't want someone else to find out. Don't do it for heaven's sake. That's just, I'm just using that as a yastic for you to help you. Because God is even bigger than the person you don't want to see it. If you don't want that person to see it, how about God? So anything you can't do in public, anything you don't want anybody else to see that you're hiding to do, you don't want people to see you, would, you know, oh, I, I don't want secret sins. They may not even look like normal sins. Even lying in public or lying in secret, they are all, this is, this is not a time, guys. This is a time to sharpen ourselves up and live righteously for God and live and live like we should. Just, just be plain before God. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. And let God help you. God will help. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am resurrection and I am life. He who believes in me, though he die, shall live again. Death is not final, friends. Let's stop being afraid of dying. It's a change of address. However, it's not your time to die now. Don't shout amen like, oh, amen. It's still fear. You should like, okay, God, what do you want me to do with my life? What is the purpose of living if there is nothing to it? What is the purpose of being here if our life is not bringing glory to God? Is it just to accumulate wealth that may end you in hell? Is it just to, um, don't get me wrong, wealth is great if you know what to do with it. If you own it and it doesn't own you, but if it owns you, you're doomed. Jesus said it would be difficult for a rich person to make heaven. Hello. Is he saying that rich people will not make heaven? No. He said it would be difficult. Why? Most people have not learned to control their wealth because their wealth is controlling them. You can't give because you think it's going to reduce. Man, you're poor. Poverty is not what is in your pocket. Poverty is a state of mind. You can have so much, but if you cannot release it easily, that is poverty. That is the highest level of poverty. Hallelujah. So, let Christ be formed in you in a fresh way. Let him continue to have free access to all of you. All of you. Everything you own. Your time, your mind, your eyes, your life, your husband, your wife, your children, your home, everything. Say, God, I give you everything and mean it because he knows if you mean it or not. Surrender it to him. We sing the song, I, I, I surrender all, I surrender all. But, you know, many, many of you are, are lying. You are, sing, you are singing, lying. <laughs> I gave myself away. But just the next minute, you get a phone call. Uh, can you please meet in church when they're going to pray for somebody? And you're like, oh no, I don't have time. I, I, I have a coffee with somebody now. You just sang, I give myself away. And then you contradicted yourself immediately. It doesn't work that way. I'm sorry I'm being straight. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you guys. I, I can't stand it. I want us to be our best. I want us to do what we can. What is this life? What will it profit if we gain the whole world and we we'll lose our soul? What's the point? I'm not here just to have children. 
I'm not here just to just to have a good house. I'm not here just to have a good car. I'm not here just to have a good job, have a good fat account. What would all that do if it doesn't bring anybody else to heaven? What would all that do if it doesn't save someone else? What would all that mean when I close my eyes to death? When you close your eyes to death, what would what what benefit will will your wealth be? Apart from your family fighting over it after you're gone, what will it be for you? What will it what, what would that wealth translate to in the kingdom of God when you get before God? You will say, "Oh, I have I have 3 trillion 3 trillion Norwegian crowns or 3 trillion dollars in my account and it's lying down there and then you're dead, you're in heaven. You can't transfer it to heaven." Use it for the kingdom, my friend. It's what you do for the kingdom here that goes into eternity with you. Souls that are saved, lives that are changed, that's what goes to eternity with you and I. It's not the things. We take, we take so much loan to have a comfortable life and we cannot take loan to serve God. Do I make, I mean, I rest my case. I, I love I love you guys too much. I love you too much. That's why I'm saying this. Please, put put all your put all, put everything on the table before God and say, God, I'm I'm in a mess. Look at all these debts. Look at all this. Look at all this. What am I gonna do? Help me. I'm already in trouble. But there's no one else I can run to but you. There's nobody that goes to God for help that doesn't get help. Listen to me. But many times when Jesus tells us or God tells us how He's gonna help us. We tend to run away like the young rich ruler that Jesus said, go sell everything and follow me. And he said, oh, I can't do this. Why? Because he had great wealth. And Jesus said, oh, how difficult it would be for a rich person to come into heaven. Forgetting that Jesus was trying to help him transfer his wealth from earth to the kingdom where it will last forever. But this physical wealth the physical wealth, the physical wealth you have now, if it is in stock exchange, only one news, you can lose everything. Only one bad news, one explosion somewhere, and stock exchange, and stock will just plummet. Psh, and all your money is gone. But if you have been investing in the kingdom, where the Bible says, thieves, and, and, uh, what? Wrath, and, and it, nothing can touch what you have placed in the kingdom. Nothing can touch it. Nothing can take away the lives that God has touched through you. Going on missions, praying for people, being a blessing to them, teaching them how to live for heaven's sake. What is your life worth if it doesn't affect somebody else? What? You work, 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 and you die. So what? What is next? Yet God has a beautiful plan for your life. Crowns waiting for you in heaven. But you can't receive them because you are tied up with one job here on earth that has not given you time to serve God. Your place of work might be where God wants you to serve him. But by heaven's sake, ask him how. Lord, how do I serve you in this place? And let us stop with the excuses. There will always be something that will want to stop us. There is always something, friends. The devil is good with that. Always something. He has a lot in his toolbox. One of the ways the devil stops Christians is by giving them a good life. <laughs> Allowing you to get so much good life. But the so-called good life he's giving you is with a string. He gives you good life that is attached with a string. It makes you compromise. Because the Bible says, they that must be rich will fall in sin. Will not be, guilt, will, will not be guiltless. Because you will do things you shouldn't do because you want to be rich. Some of you have taken loans you knew you should not have taken. You knew, how will I pay this? And they tell you the 30 years, 25 years of your life. Do it and then you pay. But how, how are you doing it? And how are you, how are you surviving it today? It, it's, it's, it's a challenge. But the God that you and I serve, the God that we are serving, is a God of faithfulness. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaking. Now, nor his seed begging bread. 
God is able to care for you. He's able to provide everything. If you've listened to me at any time, you know this is for me. This is the this is the this is the cross of my message. Stop trying to provide for yourself. You cannot. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And God is able to make all things abound to you. All things abound to you. That is his promise. All things abound to you. Brothers and sisters, we are serving a God that owns everything, sees everything, hears everything. How can we complain that things are not working? We must not be listening to him. We must not, we must not be asking him. There is nothing you need, you and I need, our ministries, our churches, our members, our businesses. How did God help Joseph in Egypt? Joseph was a businessman. Joseph, Joseph was a politician. How did he govern Egypt? How did he become what he became? He had an inner witness. The Holy Spirit was speaking to him. God was teaching him what to do. God gave him the wisdom. Are we serving the same God? Yes, of course. He can do the same for you, but we are not asking him. We are busy doing it our way. That's why we are struggling. That's why we are struggling. I gave you a testimony here before, and all my church members can testify. We were to pick up a building some, some, some uh, last month or so, or two months ago. I wanted the building myself. I loved it. I knew this was for us. I was so happy. I've been praying, God, finally we find a good place with the children, and, and everything was perfect. I've taken the church members there several times where everybody liked it. Everything was perfect. But suddenly, early this year, at some point, the Lord said, wait. I couldn't even tell my wife. Because we have been saving. I've told the church, everybody's contributing to it. Everybody's sending money towards the building. How do you now go back when people have given money for a building project? How do you go back and tell them, that I, I'm, I'm sorry, we're not going to do it again. So, when I heard the word wait, the Lord said to me, wait. I, I of course, you know, sometimes you, you just say, it's the devil. It's the devil. I rebuke the devil, even though we know it's God's word. God said, wait, don't take the building. Okay. So I, I didn't tell my wife because I, I, I just, okay. And then we went to church. I, I think it, later on, I began to give her a hint. I said, honey, I, it's like I don't have peace. I, I, my peace is not 100% on this thing. And then one evening we went to church. We had prayer meeting in church and we were praying. And, and then I brought it up. And God in his own infinite mercy had already touched the hearts of some people already too. And there was confirmation and it was such joy. Immediately that happened. It was barely a couple of weeks. Everything was locked down. Corona came. Everything was locked down. And we were supposed to have put like a mortgage. I mean, I don't know what that would be. Thousands of thousands of dollars. Humongous bill for us. As a church, we would have almost had nothing left in our account if we had taken that. But we were walking by faith. But there was a voice. It says, wait. Don't take it. Wait. Don't take it. Today, I am glad I listened. God can lead you, friends. His voice may not sound logical. Most times, it doesn't sound logical. The building you want to go and buy. The car you want to go and buy. The house you want to go and buy. Do you have 100% peace? Do you feel that, yes, this is God? I also get second opinion too. I say, talk to people that are ahead of you. Maybe some, some leaders in your life. Maybe some friends that are also spiritual. Don't go to people that are just flaky, you know, in their, in their work with God. Go with people that you know that they are working with God. You know that they can hear God with you. I said, this is what I'm sensing. What do you sense? Can you pray with me? Can we dialogue on this? Not because I'm doubting God, but I don't want to miss him. Because the Bible says, in the multitude of counsel, there is wisdom. In the multitude of counsel, there is wisdom. Which means, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word should be established. Ask someone. But more importantly, the Holy Spirit can speak to you, and he is speaking. My businessman friend, my businessman, brother and sister. God can help with your business, especially with all what is going on right now. All you need is an idea. 
all you need is an idea. I know I'm not preaching what I want to share this morning. I'm off it already. But because there's someone, there are some people out right now that are pulling this from me. You needed to hear this from the Lord. And I'm not going to stick to a message because I have prepared it. I'm going to obey God and minister to you this morning. God wants to help you, but you've got to let him. For those of you who are having business, and businesses are beginning to start again. So those of you who are in business that you're probably not sure what to do, I'm telling you, I wish you'd been taking this time before the Lord and just seeking his face and loving on him. God speaks, my friend. You know he speaks. Some of you know he has spoken to you before. But suddenly you've forgotten how his voice sounds. It's a time to bury your head between your knees and begin to say, God, let me see that cloud again. Let me see that rain. Let it rain again. Let it rain on me. Let it rain on my heart. And instead of your business collapsing, your business will shoot up. Because God will use your business as a testimony to the world. God will use your churches as a testimony to the world. I, 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 God is faithful, my friends. God is truly faithful. And I encourage you. I bless you from the depth of my heart. I will continue with this message another time. But I want us to leave it like this. He is able. He can do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ever ask, think or imagine according to the power that works within us. As we seek his face, as we trust him, as we look for him. Jeremiah 33, I believe 3, says, 33, 3. If you call on God, he will show you deep and secret things you do not know. Things you do not know. If you call on him, oh yes, he will. So the, the, the issue that we don't know what God is going to do, that, just throw that, out of the, throw that out of the window. God will reveal to you what he wants you to do. If we just sought his face and we listen to him, way more than able. I love you from the depth of my heart. I'm calling out this army of God. I'm calling out these strong believers that can walk on water. You can walk on the water of situation in your life. You, we are not going to be at the lowest cadre. Christians seem to be those at the lowest cadre. When you look at the people who are poor in an environment, you seem to be there. Most of them are Christians. When you look at people who are getting discouraged, and it seems to be that. The, Hey, we, we cannot be in, we cannot be the lowest work. Hello. People should say who owns that who owns that fine building? There's nothing wrong with fine building as long as it doesn't own you. Who owns that fine building? Oh, he's he's a Christian. Oh, really? Who has that good business? Oh, yeah, he's a Christian, he's a member of uh, Pastor Joseph's church. Hallelujah. Who owns that airline? Oh, it's a wow, it's a member of Pastor Joseph's church. He's a Christian. He's a member of the body of Christ. It's a tongue, tongue talking spirit filled believer. God wants to use you and me as a testimony to this dying world on all areas, amongst the rich, amongst the educated, amongst the scholars. It shouldn't be Christians that should be failing exams. Students, listen to me. It's not how much book you read. Mm -mm. Read your book, but it's not about the book you are reading. It's about the one that is in you. Somebody may sit, and this, 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 this is how I go, for heaven's sake, I have a PhD, I'm telling you what I know. I didn't get it by just uh, uh, going the hard way. <laughs> I got it by trusting him. I got it by, you see, this is how it worked for me, and how it still works for me. I am not the kind of person that will sit and read something, maybe I take a book, and I read it, and, uh, oh, let me read it again. Uh, oh, oh, let me read it again. Ah, it does not, it works for me. Me, I can, if I can even skim through, I can look at a book and just read. I read it once. Finito. That's how it works for me. Finito. Uh, it's not just because I am smart. No, it's because I have, I have developed the mind. Hey, God help me that I don't sound, I hope I'm not sounding out there. I hope I'm not sounding like self-righteous. I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to share a testimony to you how something, how, how God has helped me. I sat at home and, and did a city and guilds of London's exam back in Nigeria. I was a teenager. I, I couldn't afford to go to school for that at that time. And so all I did was sat at home 
and I read, I read the book. I, I got X question papers, uh, past question papers, and I sat at home and I read them. After service, I was first to be in church. I was the last. I was cleaning. I was packing things. I would be the one to pack instrument and bring. I would be the last to go home. Even before I became a staff of the church. God has helped me to just serve him. I just love. I was truly saved. I just love the Lord. I gave my everything. My parents thought I was crazy. My parents thought, what's wrong with you? You want to be a pastor? You're going to be poor. Of course, that was all they saw then. Today, by his grace, it's not a story. I kept seeking the face of God. I kept loving on him. I didn't know God was looking at my own faithfulness then. I didn't even know what faithfulness was. I just knew that I, I just wanted to, I just loved God. I was saved. I was so glad I was saved. I was so glad I was saved. I was so glad I was saved. There's, you couldn't hold me back. And so I was, and as a student, of course I was in school. I'll be in class. But I didn't know this was going on. I didn't know God was sharpening my mind because I decided to spend time, more time with him. I spent more time with God than I did with a normal book. So in a way, the time I spent with God, God compensated it by giving me a sharp mind. That instead of using three hours to read a book, I could use 30 minutes and I understood what was there. I told you, student, I, 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 it was one of my final exams. We had, a, we had a meeting in church, like, a, I don't know, a conference or something. Monday was exams. We had meetings like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Sunday till Sunday morning and Sunday evening. Closed very late. It was not possible. I mean, if you've, if you've been in an African church service, you know what I'm saying. It's not like here where we are so relaxed and everything. There, you know, I, it, it's not like 200 people. We're talking about thousands of people that you're serving and you're singing you're doing praise one hour praise you you know you're on the piano you're leading you and people are leading you're jumping and this piano is standing it's not sitting down piano that we have today then it's standing <laughs> for one two three hours and then you get home late at night how do you where's the energy to read anymore humanly speaking i just took that book that night the second day we had a WIAC, west african uh council exam or something it was a big one and uh, I go home that night. I, I don't know what time we we'll go home. Uh, 10, 30, 11 or something. And you have to be in school at 7, 38. Because it starts at, I think, 9 or so, 8. And I got back home that night. And I was looking at the book I should read. And I was like, of course, I was in class. I had read it before. You know, like you want to revise your book so you can... I took it and nothing was entering. I just said, Lord into that head I got me myself and I went to bed and I slept well but then early in the morning because this has been put in me uh, I know that I can share that again every every blessed day the Lord will wake me up in the morning I'll go into the forest I'll want there's no day I missed an hour of prayer growing up as a teenager there was no day I missed it for the 10 years after I gave my life to Christ every blessed day Today, what you, most of people do now is jogging. You just walk into the pool. You just jog. You're happy you're jogging. Why not that you're happy you've spent one hour in prayer? All the jogging you've been jogging, after one year, if you stop jogging, your body will just... But if you've been praying that the same hour you use in that... I'm not against jogging. I'm not against exercising. I'm just saying, which one profits more? The jogging or the praying? The time you spend in jogging is not as much as the time you spend in prayer. And I don't know if you can jog and pray at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? So, when I woke up that morning, because I was used to waking up early, I had my time in prayer, went into the, into the wood as usual, did my prayer, came back, took the book, I opened a page, I just looked from the top, and I just looked through it and, and read, and I remembered what was there. I flipped another page again, and I looked again, just just came through. I've seen this before. I skimmed again. I opened another place and I just read like different topics just at random. Three of the topics I read. And I just felt, I mean, the Lord will have to help me if I fail. So I fail, but I don't think I'm going to fail this. You know, so I left and went to school. Got to the examination center and we sat down. The Then the, the what do you call them? 
the invigilators, you call them invigilators, to invigilate those who will watch you exams, nobody's cheating and things like that. And will so they when it was time they brought all the papers on the table, nobody can touch, just keep your pen. When it's time, they'll tell you now, pick your paper and start. And so when it was nine on the dot, I think I had eight or nine, I can't remember exactly. When it was time, now start. So I took my paper, flipped it over. The first question my eyes went to was the first topic I read that morning. I skimmed and I smiled. <laughs> and I finished that first question. And I looked down. Second question was the second topic I read. <laughs> Brothers, the third question was a third page I opened I read. I got an A in that subject. I passed that subject. Was it my doing? Oh no. The Holy Spirit guided me to the right place to read. I still had to read it, but he guided me. I was in class when it was taught, but he guided me. Why? I gave him my time. So he gave me an idea on how to pass my exams. He didn't just put the words in my head that I have never read before. No, he guided me to it. Student, the Holy Spirit can guide you. He can give you the right words when you need it. You cannot, you should not be the ones failing exams. You are a worship leader. You are failing your school. It should never happen. It should be you that should be at the top. Don't say, oh, because I'm spending too much time in church. I'm spending too much time in God. I don't have time to read. That's why I failed. Ah, you got it wrong. That should be the reason why you are the head. Spend that time with God. And the time you will use to read your book, like this it will go. It will be downloaded in you. You will just know. I'm promising you. Look, one of the scriptures I used was Psalm 189. 99 i think or 98 psalm 189 99 or 98 you can look for it where it says i understand more than my teachers because my meditation is on the lord hey ruska tuska tayanta these are scriptures i used growing up friends as a student you know what let us open it let me let's open that scripture just for you students it's in the book of psalms psalms 119 psalms 119 I think it's 99. Yeah. Psalm 119 verse 99. He says, Yes, I have more insight than my teachers, for I always think of your laws. Shakustayata. I passed flying colors. Flying colors. The exam I sat at home and just read, I also passed that. Nobody taught me music. Well, in the beginning of my life in the, in the church where we grew up in the CSC church, I had a brother then who was like teaching and all that, you know, like vamping, we'll call it vamping. Uh, but in, in the latter days, what I'm saying, I have, I have an exam. I passed a music exam. I never went to a music school to learn how to do all this instrument or anything. I learned it by myself, by the spirit of, the, by the spirit of God. You can make it. And you will make it in the name of Jesus. And for every one of us as pastors, husbands, wives, leaders, students, the Spirit of God is there to help you and I. And He will help us. He wants to. So let's spend the time before Him every day. Every day. And see Him work in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. So I'm going to close here this morning. Uh, I, I trust this has been a blessing to you. There's somebody definitely that pulled this out or some people who pulled this out. This wasn't the message for this morning. The message for this morning was supposed to be the I am factor. We are still going to take that. But whatever it is that the Lord has pulled out from me today to you was meant to be. I will rather follow him on a step-by-step -step basis than to insist on my ways. In all my ways. I acknowledge you, O oh God. Be my guide. Be my guide. Be my light. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.